the earliest Earth was an incredibly tumultuous place. The planet has just been assembled. Maybe there were unassembled planets slamming into the Earth. We call this the Hadean Eon, which was widely believed to have been literally what that term means, that is, hell on Earth. But in 2001, the idea first surfaced that uh, that actually was not the right picture. And that really is what the Zircons tell us. We look for Zircons because their little time capsules are information that represent a fascinating window onto the very, very earliest evolution of the Earth. Achillea is, is just down here, and we're actually now into the old rock terrain, pretty much all around us now. One of the great advantages to coming to Greenland is we have a much greater area of very old rocks than anywhere else on Earth. Another great advantage here is when you look around, it's almost vegetation-free landscape. We can see an enormous amount of rock here. So it's a fantastic natural laboratory to study these old rocks and the zircons within them. Here onto the unit. Zircon is a relatively common mineral that we find in a certain type of rock. It's very hard, very resistant to pressure and temperature changes, very resistant to melting. It's a survivor, and as a survivor, it gives us this, this insight back through these processes that destroy all, all other minerals. This um, is the granite. I think parts of this have granite associated with it, yeah. It's not all tonalite. You can't usually see a zircon when you're in the field looking at a rock. But I know the kind of rocks that I'm expecting to find zircon in. Okay, this is an interesting outcrop. When we find a rock with zircon in it, we can date the zircon and that really then allows us to understand processes that have happened during the evolution of the early Earth, the early continents. So finding the right kind of rock, that's our first step. The next step is we take the hammers out and we take our sample. Got plenty of zircon out of this. AK0923. Next time we see that, we'll be in the lab. In the old days, if we wanted zircon, we would have taken 50 kilograms of rock and separated thousands of zircons. Now the technique has evolved to the point where we take a very small sample, get dozens of zircons out of it, and these dozens of zircons we can take to the iron probe and look at their different growth structures inside. When we have these grains in the iron probe here, what we want to do is measure the, the content of uranium and the content of lead. When zircon crystallizes, it incorporates uranium. Now, that uranium over time decays to lead, and because we know the rate at which uranium decays, we can convert the ratio to an age. These are zircons in the iron probe here, and this grain here that we see, that's this grain over here that we've imaged using the scanning electron microscope. And you can see four parts, and these parts have formed from the events a few hundred or even a billion years apart. It's like growth rings on a tree. The inner part is older than the outer. They, they, they grow from inside to outside. So. We're approximately in the middle of the grain here. 
And now we just start the analysis. And this part is about 3.8, this part's 3.6, and this part's 2.7 billion years old. So you've got over a billion years of history represented within a single zircon grain. But the amount of information within a zircon is not just the uranium-led geochronology. So we can extract information that isn't just age. We can actually say, to some degree, what was actually happening at the time that we're dating. Is that an inclusion? I'm not sure if that's... You have the zircon in your hand now. How do we get it to tell us the story of its life? We are developing tools to reverse engineer what, what Mother Nature has done with these zircons. We were able to grow synthetic zircons in a high pressure, high temperature device. And we measure the chemical composition. That composition in particular is the amount of impurity titanium that's incorporated into the crystal during growth which is proportional to temperature. So if you do that at a wide range of temperatures, you then have a relationship that we can apply to unknown samples. So the more titanium you get in the structure, the higher the temperature of crystallization. It's very interesting, there's some very complicated zoning in the core part of the crystal. So our thinking was, well, the only surviving samples we have from the Hadean Eon, the very earliest period of our planet's history, are ancient zircons from the Jack Hills of Western Australia. And their crystallization temperature, the temperature at which they formed, might actually give us more information. So you're, you're collecting from this region right here? Yeah, we'll just do a, a quick scan here. And it looks like- Oh, that. there's something coming up. Most of the zircons that are 4.4 billion years old fall at 680 degrees Celsius, plus or minus maybe 20 degrees. And we think that tells a very special story. Almost everybody who thought about the early Earth imagined that during the Hadean Eon, the outer surface of the Earth was a magma ocean, maybe 1,200 degrees Celsius. Incredibly hot, impacts right and left no chance for life. But these zircons at 680 degrees paint a quite different picture, which is that there were continents, the outer part of the Earth was not completely molten, there were sedimentary rocks being formed, there were oceans, and it was cool enough so the oceans didn't boil, potentially cool enough that living organisms could get a foothold. So that is what's revolutionary about this idea. These zircons, these time capsules from that period, give us better insight into this very tumultuous time in the history of our planet. <laughs>